Hello again, everyone, and welcome back to Learn Linux TV. In today's video, what we're going to do is check out Debian 13, codenamed Trixie. In this video, I'm going to give you a full review. And I'm really excited for this one because Debian is one of my favorite distributions, and I know quite a few of you among my audience are fans of Debian as well, especially given all the Debian-related comments that I see. Now, on the other hand, if you haven't ever had a chance to check out Debian before, it's one of the oldest and most respected Linux distributions out there. It's become well known for its rock solid stability and works quite well overall. When it comes to Debian 13, codenamed Trixie, the legendary project takes another step forward with a release that blends the reliability Debian is famous for, along with updated packages, new hardware support, and a handful of subtle but meaningful changes. Whether you run Linux on a server, a desktop, or something in between, Debian 13 aims to deliver a polished and predictable experience. And in today's video, we're going to check out Debian 13. I'm going to give you my thoughts about this new release. I'll let you know what I like and what I don't like so much. So without any further hesitation, let's dive into Debian Trixie. Let's start with the biggest draw of any new Debian release, updated software. Now Debian isn't known for introducing flashy, headline-grabbing features. Instead, each new version focuses on refreshing the entire software stack and making behind-the-scenes improvements to keep the system stable and reliable. These updates are important because they're how Debian gains most of its new features, by including newer versions of the software that you use every day, complete with their latest enhancements and refinements. For desktop users, the biggest changes in Debian 13 will come from GNOME 48, which is the latest version of the desktop environment that's available as of the time I'm recording this. And that's a big jump from GNOME 43 in the previous release, and that means you'll gain all the improvements and features that were introduced across five major updates to the desktop environment. Some of the more noteworthy improvements since GNOME 43 include the ability to share your Wi-Fi password with a QR code, support for accent colors, notification stacking, a brand new font, as well as numerous small refinements across the desktop. That said, GNOME typically evolves through incremental improvements rather than dramatic overhauls. Each new release tends to bring a collection of smaller changes, but upgrading from Debian 12 to 13 means jumping ahead by five major GNOME versions. So you'll see a lot more new features all at once compared to users who upgrade GNOME gradually. On the other hand, some of these features may be less impactful for Debian users. For example, dynamic triple buffering arrived in GNOME 48 and can significantly improve performance, but Debian 12 has already had that feature backported. So if you're coming from Debian 12, then you might not see a noticeable speed boost in Debian 13. Likewise, accent color customization is a nice touch for personalizing your desktop, but the change is subtle and easy to miss. But it's not all about GNOME. If you're a fan of the Plasma desktop, then Debian 13 brings a big milestone. This is the first Debian release to ship with Plasma 6, specifically version 6.3. And because Plasma 6 is a major new chapter for the project, users will see far more changes here than GNOME users will see in their update. It's a visually stunning desktop with an extensive feature set, and the leap to Plasma 6 gives KDE fans plenty to get excited about. But that's just two of the desktop environments that are available in Debian 13. There's many more to choose from, and switching between them is simple. During installation, Debian presents you with a list of popular desktop environments, and adding them is as easy as checking a box. All the major options are here, including Cinnamon, Mate, XFCE, and more. Beyond the desktop environments, Debian 13 brings updates to the entire application stack, that means nearly every included program is now several versions newer than what shipped with Debian 12. For example, you'll get LibreOffice 25.2, GIMP 3.0.4, and many other updated applications. And for most users, this refreshed software stack is one of the most compelling reasons to upgrade to a new Debian release. Now, let's shift gears and talk about the installation process. When it comes to setting up a fresh install of Debian 13, there's two primary methods the net installer, and also a series of live images. If you use the network installer, you'll be guided through a long series of setup questions before the installer downloads the latest packages directly from Debian servers. And this method tends to take the most time, not only because of the downloads, but also because Debian's installer asks more questions than any other distro installer I've ever used. The upside of this is that you get a high degree of customization over your installation, but for newcomers, the sheer number of prompts might feel a bit overwhelming. Alternatively, you could use a live media installer instead, 
which is what I recommend for most laptop and desktop users. And if you've used other Linux distributions before, then the process with the live installer will feel very familiar. You'll boot into a fully functional demo environment, and there you could try Debian before committing to installing it. The live installer is simpler and quicker, and most importantly, it lets you test hardware compatibility before replacing your current operating system. And this is crucial because you don't want to install Debian only to find out that your Wi-Fi or other essential hardware doesn't work. By testing this first, you'll greatly improve your chances of a smooth installation. And when it comes to the live installer, there's multiple different versions available. Debian features a separate live media installer for each of the various desktop environments that it makes available, so all you have to do is choose your favorite desktop environment and download the appropriate image. On the other hand, the network installer will give you a menu you could use to install a specific desktop or even multiple desktops if you want to. So for those of you that intend on installing more than one desktop environment, the network installer is the way to go. Otherwise, I suggest using one of the live images. All in all, even though there's a number of options available for setting up a fresh installation of Debian 13, the process isn't too bad and most people should be able to navigate it just fine. Next, let's talk about the upgrade process. If you already have Debian 12 installed and you want to upgrade it to the latest version, the process isn't quite as straightforward as a fresh install, but in my experience, it generally works well. The Debian team puts forth a lot of effort when it comes to testing the upgrade process, and so far it's been working just fine. In fact, I've already upgraded every single server that I'm responsible for, and I haven't had a single issue. If you haven't gone through the process before, well, here's how it works. First, you'll create a full backup of your current system, that's really important, and you'll want to do that in case something goes wrong. After that, you should install all updates within Debian 12, so that way you're starting from a completely up-to-date standpoint. After that, you'll begin the process of upgrading by editing your sources.list file and replacing every mention of the word bookworm with Trixie. Once that's done, you'll run apt update followed by apt dist upgrade, and your package manager will handle the rest. When it comes to my systems, the upgrade process updated between 500 and 1,000 packages, and it took around 5 to 10 minutes to complete. While it's a manual process, it's not overly complicated, and again, it worked just fine for me. But there is one important tip I want to give you if you are upgrading a server, and that is to check carefully before confirming the upgrade. And the reason for that is the upgrade process generally removes certain packages, so you may need to reinstall them afterwards. For example, on a server running PHP, Debian will remove all PHP packages during the upgrade, which could break a web server until you reinstall those packages. And this can also happen with other software as well. For a real life example of this, what you're seeing on the screen right now is actual footage when I went to upgrade the web server for Learn Linux TV. As you can see, several packages were removed during the process and I had to reinstall them manually afterwards. Now, for someone that's experienced when it comes to package management, this isn't really a big deal, but if you're less familiar, it can be a bit time consuming. Keep in mind that some package names change between releases, so if a package is no longer available, you'll need to find its new equivalent. Again, it's not too difficult, but it is something to be prepared for. Sorry to interrupt my own video, but I just wanted to let you know that I appreciate each and every single one of you and I love creating Linux related content for you guys. But unfortunately, producing high quality Linux content like this isn't cheap. But if you want to help me make even more content for you guys, then consider supporting Learn Linux TV. And a great way to do that is to check out the official shop for Learn Linux TV, which was just recently updated. Inside the shop, you'll find distro themed shirts, bags, drinkware, and more. And there's some other surprises there as well. For example, I've just introduced a mouse pad that doubles as a Tmux cheat sheet. How cool is that? So check out the shop at merch.learnlinux.tv or you could check out the merch shelf right here on YouTube. You could get yourself something really cool and support Linux learning at the same time, so it's a win-win. Anyway, thank you guys so much for your support. I really appreciate it. Now, let's get back to the video. Continuing, let's talk about performance. Overall, I haven't noticed any major performance improvements in Debian 13, but to be fair, Debian has been fast and efficient for years, and this release is no different. Now, Debian 12 did get a bit of a speed boost, as that was the first release to bring us dynamic triple buffering in GNOME, and that provided a noticeable boost in performance at the time. And that benefit is still present in Debian 13, but there's nothing new this time around that delivers a similar jump. That said, Debian's performance and reliability remains excellent in Debian 13. In my experience, everything feels smooth, it's responsive, and it easily keeps up with my workload. 
Of course, results will vary depending on your hardware and chosen desktop environment, but I think for most people, you'll be satisfied with the performance of this new release. But as great as Debian 13 happens to be, it's not without its drawbacks. Now, there's nothing critical to be aware of, but the thing is, some of Debian's design decisions over the years have felt a bit antiquated, and this release is no exception. And one of Debian's biggest limitations is how strictly it freezes software versions. While each new release does ship with an updated software stack, that doesn't mean that everything is truly up-to-date at launch. It's often hit or miss. For example, GNOME 48 is included this time around, which is great since it's the latest version of the desktop as of the time I'm recording this. Plasma, however, is at version 6.3, which is newer than what shipped in Debian 12, but already behind the curve. Plasma 6.4 came out in July, and 6.5 is already in development. And this freeze applies to point releases as well. For instance, GNOME 48.4 includes bug fixes and small improvements, but Debian 13 users will never get it. While avoiding major mid-cycle upgrades makes sense for stability, withholding minor bug fix releases is absolutely baffling to me. I mean, if GNOME is going to publish a point release that includes bug fix and stability updates, then why wouldn't we want that in Debian Stable? But I digress. Anyway, it's not just desktop environments that are frozen. Individual applications are also affected. Now, there are exceptions to this rule, such as Firefox, which is periodically updated, but others, like LibreOffice, will remain locked at the version that's shipped at release. And this is especially problematic because LibreOffice updates often improve compatibility with Microsoft Office formats, so running an outdated version could mean reduced interoperability over Debian 13's lifecycle. But as with all things Linux, there are workarounds. For desktop users, enabling Flatpak support is quick and it provides access to newer versions of software. In fact, I have a separate video that covers how to set it up, and I'll give you a card for that video right about here. Another option is Debian Backports, an official repository that offers newer packages. However, Backports is hit or miss, with many packages missing. And desktop environments aren't included, so its usefulness is limited. All in all, using a stable version of Debian means your software stack is going to be behind all other distributions, and that's just the way it is. And sure, you could always set up a mixed release and bring in packages from testing, but that's not actually supported or recommended. In fact, there's an entire article on Debian's website that tells you not to do this. It is a way that you can get newer software, but again, it's not supported. Another drawback of Debian is its upgrade process. Yes, it usually works very well, and Debian's developers have clearly put in a lot of effort when it comes to making sure upgrades work from one release to the next. The problem is that while the process does work just fine, it's far from user-friendly. Reason being, you have to perform the entire upgrade process manually. For me, that's not really a big deal since I've been doing this for years, but compared to other distributions, it's definitely a step backwards in terms of convenience. Take Fedora, for example. When a new release is available, you'll get a notification, and all you have to do is click on it to confirm, and then the upgrade process happens automatically. Other distributions offer a similar one-click or guided process, but Debian, on the other hand, still requires you to edit configuration files and run commands manually. So, while the upgrade process is solid, it's surprising to me that Debian hasn't modernized this yet, especially when other distributions have been streamlining upgrades for years. Finally, it's worth noting that Debian 13 has dropped support for 32-bit systems. From this point forward, their 64-bit version is the only option. In practice, though, this isn't much of a drawback, as nearly all CPUs released since around 2004 can run 64-bit software. Now, there are some exceptions to this, such as older netbooks or other legacy hardware, but the vast majority of users won't be affected by this at all. Still, this is something that you should keep in mind if you're working with older machines. If you're using a legacy system, then you should not upgrade to Debian 13. You can anyway. Instead, you should continue to use Debian 12 for now, as it'll be supported with security updates for some time to come. And there you go. In this video, we checked out Debian 13, and I hope you enjoyed this review. I had a lot of fun checking out Debian. It's one of my favorite distributions, like I mentioned earlier, and Debian 13 is awesome. Now, I do think there are some improvements that the project should make overall, but when it all comes down to it, Debian is awesome, and Debian 13 is a great release for Debian fans. Anyway, let me know what you thought of this review in the comments down below, and I'll see you in the next video.